We're back at Horse Racing Nation, ready to dish with the prince himself, the Paddock Prince, ahead of Breeders' Cup 2022. Get the housekeeping out of the way first, David. Obviously, you're going to have Breeders' Cup sheets and no Churchill this week, though. Uh, you will have Aqueduct at Aqueduct, Breeders' Cup at Keeneland, and then next week back to uh, Churchill as well. Is that right? Yep. The uh, the sheet for Keeneland for Breeders' Cup Friday will be posted after we get off this video. And then um, for the Saturday sheet, it should be posted around Thursday morning. And then I'll be doing Aqueduct, as you said. No Churchill for me this week, though. I, I, three tracks is um that's a lot of that's a lot of work, especially with big two days of Breeders' Cup. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I uh, got the two-year-olds on Friday. And before I get to one opinion of yours I'm particularly uh, interested in, wanted to ask you your opinion, my opinions. Most of them are on Saturday, though. But on Friday, Cave Rock, I came into the week thinking, man, he looks invincible on paper, total standout on everything I've looked at, except on the Ragazin sheets, he's not three to five. And that gives me some pause of taking a super short price. I have not seen anyone pick against this horse yet. Are you going to be the first? You're talking to the person that's the first. I um he <laughs> nice. on paper he does look he does look pretty good. His buyers are better than everybody else's. But the one horse entering the race, the speed horse from the rail for Lobo, I don't know if he can keep up early, but if he does, I think he could give him some pace pressure. And then honestly, I kind of like the other bat for third time out, even though Cave Rock beat him by five links in the prep in the American Pharaoh. This is only his third start for National Treasure. So I think he could get a good trip in here and Cave Rock. I mean, he's going to be three to five, the lowest price on the card, but I actually have a better opinion in the last race. So I'm not going to single Cave Rock and I'm going to try to beat him a little bit. And obviously knowing he's going to be three to five and the horse to beat. Yeah, just uh, it seems like everyone is, is, I don't shouldn't say everyone's leaning on him, but you're the first I've seen to pick against him. I have not fully decided yet if I'm going to take the plunge. Uh, certainly the stable mate. Uh, Forte with the win at the track and distance. Uh, Blazing Seven's got a really good number. Uh, I'm not sure if this is really the spot for him, given the other talent in the race, but I think it's a deeper race than just Cave Rock and moving out. Yeah, and Blazing Seven's apparently is like the workhorse that everybody's liked to Keeneland since he's got to Keeneland. So I, I don't know about him, though. Forte beat him pretty handily in the hopeful. He did come back in the champagne and win, but I think Forte is a better horse than he is. Forte is also going to get a good trip in this race if there's some pace because there was pace last time and he already won over the track. I just – I'm not the biggest fan of this horse, and he he kind of is what he is, I feel like. He's he's a 92 to 95 buyer horse, and I think there's a couple horses from the Baffert barn, obviously, with some more upside, but it wouldn't shock me if Forte won because there could be some pace in here to set it up for him, and he's got to win over the track if if you look much into that. All right. Well, we'll make, we'll make people go to the website and access your picks, but it did sound like, correct me if I'm wrong, that you like something in the nightcap, which is the juvenile turf. So could be a, a place to lean and maybe allow you to spread in some of the earlier races. Yep. Correct. I think um, the pick five starts off like spreads. And then I think towards the end, I got some opinions towards the end and I, am, I just gave it away. I'm going to play against cave rock in the wind pool. It's too low to bet in the wind, but I do think he's vulnerable there. And I do think there's a good chance he could be the biggest favorite of the weekend. It's, it's the way everybody's talking. It could be close to flight line level, depending on what price flight line goes off. But it could be, it could be in that three to five range. I feel like. Yeah. I think, uh, I think a big factor doesn't get talked a lot about people in contest circles sort of know, but, the BCBC, uh, despite how huge these pools are, has the ability to actually move the pools a little bit. And depending on what people need to do and how much they're willing to risk in the classic is certainly going to affect the odds on flight line. My dream scenario would be something like people need to send it in on Life is Good, Olympiad, Taba, Epicenter, whatever, and actually make flight line very, very playable. I mean, I think he's probably playable even at three to five, but at four to five, certainly very playable. So uh, that would make you right, though, because I think K-Rock's going to be three to five for sure. 
Yeah. I mean, for two year olds, you don't see many two year olds running hundred. And if you look at his, he kind of almost, if you watch his replays, he almost re breaks in the lane. Like his, his first quarters aren't exceptionally quick, but he really picks it up in the second quarters. And then in the lane, he just hits another gear. So I think the the strength is from California in that race. It will be interesting to see the odds are in the classic, because if you watch FanDuel TV and get on Twitter, I think there's only one horse running in the classic and that's fine. And they don't even mention the other horses at this point. So <laughs> Uh, we'll see. The, the three-year-old seems like they're going to take more money. Well, that's because of the Derby, but he's, you know, we've, we talked about Rich Strike last week. He's going to suck up for fourth, and then he's going to be he's going to be a proven horse. Yep, he'll prove um, the doubters wrong. Yeah, I haven't – I don't think one person likes life is good. So you actually might get eight to ten to one on if you actually like life is good. I uh, I like them second best. Um Definitely, I'm definitely keen to see the exacto Lopez and actually put. I did fair odds after the pre entries, but I did exacto fair odds uh, now that we have the field. So, uh, looking forward to getting people's thoughts on that uh, and excited to see where some of the inefficiencies might be in that wager. Earlier on the Saturday card, there are two horses I'm extremely excited to bet. Uh, as some of you may have seen on Twitter, and I am curious your take. Moira in the Philly and Mare Turf. Is that because you have an affinity for her, or do you actually think her figures are good enough to win? She got a four on the Raggis and Sheets for the Queen's Plate, and that is absolutely good enough to win this. I don't look at Raggisons. What did in Italian get? Do you know what she got in her last couple races? Uh, she's She's pretty fast. She's six to eight. Which as a front runner is is right there. I think if you like that horse, I think you have to definitely upgrade the rider. Frankie DeTore definitely helps that horse. The distance should not be an issue. And honestly, if you don't like in Italian in that race, I feel like it's very wide open because I think there's a real chance in Italian could just steal it on the front end. The distance might be an issue for, but she got a mile and an eighth in the Diana pretty easily. But she just seems like one of those horses ever since she's gone to the lead with all this speed she has with Rosario, she's been really tough to run down. So I haven't fully handicapped. I haven't looked at all the euros right in that race, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. What's, what's your horse on the line? 20? Mm, 10, I think. Then. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, you're going to get a 10 to 15 to one price probably on her. So I don't think she's impossible. I just think that if you, you just have to look at that race as an Italian. And if you don't think she's getting, if you think she can get run down, then I think that race becomes very wide open. All right. Well, uh, I'll, I'll take that from you. Usually you're, you're pretty critical of my pick. So I'll take a not. No, I, no, I just give you a hard time. I don't think that horse is impossible, especially if you think her rags, I guess if her rags stack, I don't use rags and sheets, but if right. her rags stack up with, does it do, uh, this is, I don't use rags at all. Do they show the euros on ragazins? They do. They do. Yep. I wonder why buyers never had numbers for euros. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know Ragazin, like they based it, it, admittedly is not the methods to a T what they do here. Um, sort of retrofitted once they know they're coming here, they'll make the figure, which is a little different than the approach day to day racing. But it's, I still trust it enough that it gets you in the ballpark. Yeah, I like to look at time form numbers for the Euros because I, I feel like that gives you a decent gauge of the Euro competition and then obviously, you know, replays and who they run against. All right. Well, speaking of Euros, two races later, my second strongest opinion. Uh, currently, if Moyer ends up being steamed down to like four to one, something ridiculous, then it's I'm not going to be as bullish. But in the mile, I'm very confident we're going to get the price because of the Euros in the race. And the fact that one of those euros actually beat this horse, but I am big time on Ivar. You know, I was looking at that race. Another so jockey Ivar is actually interesting. A big one too. No, I mean Tal. There's not that Talmo's done anything wrong, but anytime you can get Javier, and Javier has been riding very well in the last six months. He had a big Sarah, big Belmont, big Saratoga, doing well at Akron. He did well at Bach. So he's had a good last four or five months. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't mind that horse as a long shot. I think that race is pretty wide open. I think a lot of people are going to bet modern games. I was big on domestic spending until that post draw. I don't, I mean, that's a long layoff to get post 14. Flavian's going to have to really work his magic. So if you don't like modern games in that race, which I don't think you can toss him, but I do think 
Does it bother you that he ran two weeks ago, three weeks ago? Uh, and I, I've seen this before from the Euros. I, I always feel like if the Breeders' Cup's the plan, then it doesn't bother me, even if they get beat. Uh, what I don't like is definitely the like, oh, we got beat. We're going to go to the Breeders' Cup and try to go out with the win. It's like you, you can't really just decide you're going to the Breeders' Cup, ship across the ocean on two weeks rest. But, you know, with this trainer especially, I definitely feel like as long as this was the plan all along, yeah. it, it fits. And he is the horse to beat. Um, you know, whereas Moira, I'm really excited and think she's right there among any of them. Ivar is more, uh, you know, taking a taking a shot at 15 to one uh, against maybe some better ones. But, you know, two turn mile turf, if he's in the clear and is running late, it can happen. And he ran well in the shed or the Coolmore mile. Now that is the winner Annapolis, who's also in this race at 10 to one, got an absolutely perfect trip. I mean, just sat on the rail behind the pace, got the split. So Ivar did have to make up a little more. Had to do a little more dirty work than Annapolis, who's going to be a way shorter price, most likely, with IRAD riding. So, you know, I don't mind right. Ivar either. And I can't believe I kind of agree with two of your long shots <laughs> so far. All right. Those are two of mine. Uh, you did mention you're against Cave Rock in the wind pool. My question for you, a little more general. We know you're a TAP fan. Uh, we've touched on a couple races where he has entrance. I didn't get the impression you love. Uh, either Forte or Annapolis, not that you're against them per se, but my question isn't about who you like a little. I want to know who the most likely Todd Pletcher winner is of the Breeders' Cup. I think it's Malathot on Saturday in the distaff. Um, I think Chocolate Gelato has a good chance on Friday. I like her way more than I do Forte in the two-year-old races. Um, I can't – Annapolis is – he is a three-year-old on the upswing, and – Three-year-olds, I think – I didn't look up the stats, but I feel like three-year-olds have done well in the Breeders' Cup miles, so I wouldn't throw out a nap. I mean, Oral Australia won two years ago at yeah, 199. Yeah, Golden Cova, six perfections. Yeah, so I feel like three-year-olds this time of the year in the mile do well. So I don't. I wouldn't completely – if you look at the pace projector on time form, too, it has Annapolis sitting third right behind the two speed balls. So he could get another trip again, but I really feel like – and I don't know if this is price-based, but I feel like they're going to go overboard on Nest, and it's going to make Malathot really three-to-one range. And I think she's the best horse in the race – probably the one post is a little, I don't know. She's going to have to break well and get position, but she did get the one post in the Spencer, but that was a way different race. But I think Malathot's thought's the most likely uh, Pletcher winner. All right. More than life is good then. I don't know what I'm in. Life is good. He's, you know, he's my, he's one of my, I just, I don't, I don't know how he's, I don't know how he's going to win. I mean, he's going to have to go 45, open up and just hope fly the line for some, the, the speed. I just don't know how, I don't know a scenario where, I don't know, maybe we'll see. I actually think there's a better chance of both of them not winning than life is good winning. Cause I just don't see how their life is good. It's going to keep up with that pace prop. with fly line chasing it. If I mean, what like if, they, I go, get, what if like, they go 44? I feel like last year Medina spirit was written to be second. 1000%. He was written to be second for the best three old because if you looked at that race, everybody thought he was going. He literally made no effort to go. Yeah. He just ran second to prove he was. It, if you were to tell me that, that Derby Fletcher is his instructions are ride to be second, I would love the cold exacta. Because if flight, if flight line no, they're going. race, life is good would be my pick. Yeah, he's he would be dead lone speed. And if you look at the, they're both one thirty four and one thirty three early on the pace projector. So I don't. It's just gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see how Flavian rides the race because Pletcher's already made it known they're going and they're not gonna slow down. It sounds like because I don't think they think they can get in that because in the Woodward they kind of I wouldn't say they kind of rated him to be honest. Off they kind of just let him jog around there and he almost lost a law professor in his best races <laughs> where he ran Nick's go off his feet. He ran the dirt mile off his feet um, off their feet. Right. So. He's, I don't think they're going to sit back no, if they go 47, think, if they go 47. I mean, I, I think Todd has, has an ace up his sleeve. Unfortunately, you're kind of going against the Royal flush with flight line. But I mean, he, to me, I mean, I talked about this before last year, I got sucked in by the slower figure in, was it the Kelso last year or the, the, uh, 
It was Whatever. the Kelso when he beat three claimers. Yeah. yeah. And the figure came back slow. And I'm like, well, if he runs back to that, he can't even win the dirt mile. And, you know, Pletcher just had all the right, the screws turned all the right way. I don't know if he can turn him that much to beat flight line, but I'm not buying the, the slow figure this year. And if you look at the Brisnet pace ratings, what you said is absolutely correct. He was rated as best you could in a race where he was so much the best. And he came home, his late pace rating was quicker than his early, which for a horse of his running style yeah. was incredible. And granted, he was ridden that way, but that was and that was with purpose. And if they figure out how to do that here to be second, he'll be second. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if it was because of maturity, but if you watch his two works at Keeneland, the first work he had, it was not very, like, life is good like. And then the last one it was more life is good like. So I don't know if they're kind of, like, slowing him down a little in these works so they can just go full blast in the classic because, I mean <laughs> – he is a very good horse. And if and I'm, not, I'm not saying this is going to happen, but if flight line, if for some reason he gets like a two or three length lead and he's really coasting along, would I be shocked if he won? No, I just don't see Flavian's going to let him get too far away from yeah, him. Yeah. No, we'll I, see. I, Crazier things have happened. I have to think Flavian is looking for the lead down the backside. Okay. Let me ask you this. If they don't win, who's the most likely winner? Who's the third horse to win? Who's if, let's say they get an epic speed duel and they both stop. Who's the winner? It gotta be Taba. I you just kind of think like if, if they if neither one wins, to me that's sort of like a Haskell redux. Yeah, Which, and Taba. Is doing and I came up well. the rail, so maybe it's Rich Strike again. But um, I, no, I, I don't not. see that it's happening not. here. Yeah. I don't either. I was just because a lot of people are probably going to think they're going to somebody's going to try to play a horse in second, I, you know, a flight line straight exact. And if people don't like life is good, I feel like their table is going to be the third. Yeah, horse. no, I'm I'm eager to see the exacta pool. I mean, it it seems like I've read people thinking Taba is going to end up being the steam, but he hasn't taken any money offshore yet. He's still the fourth choice. Nick didn't make him the second choice, so. I mean, maybe the money ends up showing up at him. I mean, I, I guess Olympiad is sort of the forgotten. I don't like Hot Rod Charlie or Rich Strike. Their race was not fast enough last out. Um, they're just if not you look at Olympiad, in my mind. his pace figures, the races he wins are slow paces. Like he sits on top of paces that aren't that fast. But when you watch me, and I don't know what happened in the Whitney, but when life is good, ran him off his feet, that was a quick pace and he couldn't sustain it. But his his wins are and I agree with you. He's forgotten about. It. I mean, he's. I mean, he's probably the. He's the third most accomplished horse in the country this year. When you say behind flight line and life is good. I mean, if oh, he yeah. won the race, if, some, if he somehow won the race, he would win horse of the year. Absolutely. But he's going to be forgotten about him because of the main two and then um, the three year olds. I mean, you're probably going to get twelve to one on him. Ten to one, I think, since morning line. You're probably going to get in. I don't and know. It I actually think he has a better chance to win than Epicenter. And Epicenter is going to be twice as probably yeah uh, no, I, half its price i agree uh but yeah goes through flight line for me life is good I'm, I'm eager hopefully they both get to run their race and we see a show and there is one more race after the classic which you will have covered with your chad, seat, chad so. brown looks good in that race by the way I did is it turf or dirt it's a turf race and chantasar is running and um technical analysis is the second choice oh, okay it looks like uh, Chad Zacta. The Brown Show. All right. Well, I guess that's it for the dish. Next week, we'll uh, we'll wrap it all up. Hopefully talk about us both winning big. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, I've, I've glanced through all the Saturday. Huh? I am going. going. Are you going? Oh, yeah. Where are you going to be? You're going to be in the... Wherever they be. steerage with the rest of the media. It's um, It's a zoo at Keeneland for the Breeders' Cup. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's um, it's a zoo, but it's fun there. The weather looks good, so everything. Yeah, looks weather good. looks great. Yeah, they put on a good show. I know they're ready, so I'm excited. Yeah, the, I went to the one in 2015 with American Pharaoh, and it was a good time. I've been to a yeah. lot. I've been to. Were you Tepin's groom then? <laughs> no, that was that was the next year. That was the oh, next okay. year. Yeah, I was Tepin's groom, Classic Empire's groom. I mean, that's why the barn was going so good. They had your touch. 
hot walk and tepping was the worst 15 minutes of my life. Why was she aggressive? Yeah. And you just didn't want to, you didn't want to drop that. You didn't want to let that one run off. Ah, uh, yeah. Pressure too. I mean, you know, I was, that was more nerve wracking than playing for Best coach. horse to ever uh, race at Delta Downs. I reckon. Correct. I for you. People don't, I don't even know if people know that. <laughs> it's like a yeah. dirt sprint. Too, dirt. Isn't it? Uh, well, two turns, but seven furlongs. Yep. I remember that. I think Mana rode in that race. I think it was Mana. I think I Mana was right. in the first two races. Yeah. yeah. No, she was, she was all right. Are you going to oh. be playing um, Aqueduct this weekend? Uh, I'm going to look at your sheet and see if there's a price I can, when I need a slump buster. That's what, that's exactly what Aqueduct is for during Breeders' <laughs> Cup. If you're, if you're bored in between races and you got nothing going, play some Aqueduct. And it's aqueduct at aqueduct. Yeah, no, I know. It's going to be weird. The scenery is going to change. The signage is all going to be the same. Um, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be different. Yeah. What a, what a vibe. All right. Well, hopefully I'll see you out there at least uh, exchange some text about successes. Good luck. It's so right. fun. The turf races look, I mean, the, the turf races just look, I mean, challenging, but that's how it should be in the British Cup, I guess. Absolutely. All right. Paddock Prince is available at picks.horseracingnation.com. I'll be back throughout the week along with Sarah Obad. We have plenty of other uh, information about the races to come. And we'll be back with David next week. Good luck, everybody.